I'm roughly sorting some of my Shetland. This is Mala, and Mala's fleece, from what I have left, has um, some gray in the center here um, to, you know, kind of off-white gray right there, almost white. Um, it has some darker bits that I set aside from earlier. Um, this is part of, this is one of the places in my Shetland Colorwork project, so I had a, some really lovely dark grays out of this, but there wasn't a ton of it. There's a lot of this kind of medium gray. And then on the back end, excuse my allergies, on the back end, I've got this really, really long, um, a little dirty, but some of it's dirty, some of it's, like, that's pretty clean. Um, over here, you can see some of it's just, like, full of dirt. Like, that's not color, that's dirt um, that will wash out. And that's, like, you know, greasy lanolin and dirt <clears throat> that's causing that color. So, um, this will turn pretty white when I wash it. Um, okay, I sorted, like, just split off the long, really long white, and I think I'm going to sort this into bins. This, by the way, is so easy to sort. I love these. This doesn't take a ton of work because all of the locks are in these big chunks, um, so I can just, like, quickly rip them apart, stack them, and wash them. Shetland, super easy to wash really nice to work with. I mean, each each place is different, and I've had some that are better than others, but this, I'm telling you, is going to be really easy to wash and easy to um, sort. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to try and dye this today. Um, probably hot pink. <laughs> Why not, right? All right, I sorted um, the two, like I said, but I decided to flip this over so that you can see the cut side because it's actually easier to see the colors when you um, put it cut side up instead of having the tips up because the tips often are a lot lighter um, or a different color than the, the cut side so you can see that I have some white that I hadn't sorted out right here so I can start sectioning out this white and put that in the white pile and there's a little bit over here too but yeah I just wanted to share that that's a good tip for when you're trying to sort colors is to um, actually sort from the cut side up you can see the colors better that way sometimes I've started sorting these um, locks into bins it's going super quick because like I said this is so easy it's not like tangled or anything. This fleece was really um, kept together the way it comes off the sheep and that is um, the best thing. I feel like a hand spinner um, would really appreciate that from the, the farmer. Um, the best, the, the, the better it can be kept like it came off the animal. It makes my job easier when I'm sorting it. Um, so this one is a really good example of that. Um, and I think some fleeces do hold their shape better than others, um, different breeds. But anyways, so I wanted to show you. I'm sorting this, and this lock, you can see, is... I'm really sorry about my allergies. I'm so sniffly. But um, this lock is longer than my hand. <laughs> um, and then this is a little one that I washed up last night. And hopefully you can see the color difference. This is really pretty shiny white. So this is all going to clean up really beautifully. And this white, um, you know, I, you don't want to make everything you make. You don't want it to be white. Um, it can be beautiful, but if you're like me, then, and you're um, accident and stain prone, <laughs> then um, white garments are, um, you know, <laughs> maybe not the best. So I'm going to dye these, and this beautiful white is going to take color really nicely. Washing the wool, you guys have seen this quite a few times if you've been following me for a while. Um, I'm draining out some of the water. You can see that that water is pretty funky, and it smells it too. <laughs> 
this fleece is um, definitely not the cleanest fleece. Not a, not a pleasant, more of a barn smell than a nice fleece smell. But I know from experience that that will all wash out really easily. This first wash will be the funkiest. This is what I usually do is sit here and drain out the water as much as possible. And then I'll set the bends aside, bucket all of the water using a five gallon bucket. And then I happen to have also washed just a teeny bit of some dark wool that I set aside that <clears throat> was from the same fleece, but I'm just gently squeezing it and it's just a teeny bit. Um, it's really short and it's not really the greatest wool, um, but uh, this little teeny sample could be made into something nice, maybe like a little stuffed Christmas ball or who knows, but um, there's some really pretty dark gray and black in there. All right, I'm gonna finish draining this. Working on hand carding some Shetland that I dyed ages ago. These are my hand cards, uh, 72 times per inch. Um, I am, these are the ones, I, they're the only hand cards I have. And I used these to make my first fleeced FO garment, which was the um, fin fleece um, that I turned into the arboreal or arboreal, whichever, however you say it, um, the little leaf pattern sweater that I made. So yeah, I dyed this red Shetland quite a while ago. This is um, actually a colored wool. It's not a white wool. It's got a little bit of um, light brown to it. I think this might have been Layla's. It's either Layla's or um, Kelsey's Shetland. Fleece. I don't remember which. Um, I have notes on it in Ravelry though. So yeah, made this huge, ridiculously fluffy rollag. Little update. This has taken me all day. <laughs> Not really, but feels like it. Um, okay, so in between washing, I worked on some rollags of some old dyed fiber that I did. Right now, I'm getting ready to pick out the color that I want for my um to dye the Shetland so Nala's white Shetland so you can see these um colors that I've flipped over are the ones that I'm kind of looking at oh that color is not picking up true okay that looks like in the in my view it looks like this is kind of a powdery blue in reality it's a very very vibrant blue hmm that's weird change the angle okay anyways I used to dye yarn for an Etsy shop um, hand dyed yarn speckled yarn part of me misses it a little bit because it was fun to do but um, I had to quit to focus on school and um, also was starting to change anyway I'm not gonna get into all of it I was starting to like just kind of want to get away from superwash and be more into um, breed specific yarn and you know small batch kind of mill um, local mill spun kind of stuff so um, if I had continued I think I would have made that shift at any rate um, I have a bunch of stuff from dyeing from that time when I had that little Etsy shop so um, this is some of my dyes that I had I did um, like using pro chem these are some of the choices that I picked out, and I think the rest of the colors, except for this blue, is showing up. This is like a very vibrant turquoise. Um, so this is magenta, this is hot pink, this is key lime, and turquoise. And these are the ones that I'm kind of debating between. I was definitely thinking pink or hot pink, um, because I like wearing that color a lot, and I know that um, I just go for that color, um, and, you know, why not make something that you know you'll love and you'll get a lot of wear out of, um, so I'm heavily leaning towards one of these two. Um, turquoise is also a really great color that goes with a lot of things, but I don't know that, um, I, I don't know, I'm not sold on it. Key lime, how fun would it be to tie a key lime? I feel like... That would just be so fun. Um, have this lime green 
garment. Um, I don't know if I'm brave enough to go for key lime though. So yeah, this is, I swear, this is like the hardest part is choosing colors. <laughs> All right, you can see that Nala's Shetland got really clean. Um, the gray is natural. It's a white and gray and different shades of gray. So there is some gray in the white. <clears throat> I've actually noticed that some of that combs out. Um, but it's going to get over dyed and then combed all together. So, and actually that will add some really fun, um, you know, light tonal variegation to the yarn. So I've got that soaking in citric acid and that just helps the dye adhere to the, um, these are protein fibers. Uh, wool is a protein fiber. Cotton is a plant based fiber. So, um, just a little... Um, background information you need to know for dyeing. So I'm getting ready to, in this little um, plastic, um, oops, <laughs> in this little plastic container down here, I'm going to mix the dye and I'm going to put on um, a mask to protect my lungs from the very fine particles, which can cause cancer. And um, I know some people throw caution to the wind and don't use it, but um, I think that's dangerous. You want to take care of yourself. You want to take care of your body. I'm not judging anyone, but I think you do need to take those steps. And I will not do a tutorial on how to die. I'm just kind of taking you along for the ride. This is not a tutorial, but um, I do want to just say, do take care of yourself. Um, take precautions. If you're going to work with acid dyes, um, wear a mask. Just for reference, this is my mask. It is a inexpensive mask that I got at a home, you know, like department uh, store, home improvement store. Um, and this is rated, um, it has the correct rating for the fine particles that the dye has. So. When I open that, um, little bitty teeny particles won't fly into my lungs. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm talking through my mask. Can you see all the little teeny tiny specks of pink? Okay, that could be in my lungs right now. So. I just want to point that out. I'm going to clean this up and then I'm going to take my mask off. This is what the pink looks like. Um, it's quite concentrated right now, so it looks way darker than um, it will when I add it to the pot. I'm going to be adding this to a pot full of a lot of water and I'm dyeing quite a bit of fiber. So I actually might make more when I put this in the water. We'll see if it looks really light. Um, I might end up doing some more dye, but anyways, it looks way darker to start. All right, now that the dye is in liquid form, I don't have to wor worry about the mask, and you can see that this is pretty hot pink. I just pulled this up so that it would lift some of the fiber up. I'm going to press it back down, press it back down. Um, you can see that it's a very hot pink colors coming up pretty true. I would say, if anything, it's more neon in person than maybe the camera's picking up. Um, so this is going to be a super duper hot pink. <laughs> Probably. You know, I was talking um, earlier on, uh, not on here, I think I was doing it on Instagram, kind of like talking about what I want to make with this. And, um, there are two garments I was kind of thinking about, but as much as it want, I want to go for the um, quicker garment, I think I'm going to get more wear out of um, something that, you know, I really put time and effort into and make something that um, will be a real staple. That has been like my theme lately is making staple garments that I will get a lot of wear out of, things that... I know that I will wear a lot and um, that are kind of a little bit timeless. Um, <laughs> I know hot pink 
is not everybody's thing, but um, for me, it's it's a go-to color, so it's uh, it's borderline and neutral, really. <laughs> it's a sink full of pink. <laughs> Don't mind the movie playing in the background. It's kind of late at night. My husband's watching a movie, but I wanted to stop late. Stop late. Oh my god. I wanted to stop really quick. I've been doing this, like, all day. <laughs> and show you, um how this uh, shit one turned out. I've got to wash it still. Um, this is showing up more like fuchsia on camera than it is in real life. I don't know if I can get the color to go true. It's like, it's pretty neon, but it's a little bit maybe lighter. All right, I'm gonna wash this, make sure that it gets out all of the citric acid and also make sure that the color isn't gonna bleed and then let it dry. Ooh, oops. Some, I hope I'm not getting that everywhere. No. A little bit of blue got on my finger. Went wrong. Okay. Um, I'm gonna wash this and then let it dry out tomorrow. Alright, I combed some of the fiber and I wanted to show you a little before and after. So this is um, it dry. This is what it looks like before. And you can tell me what you think this looks like. Oh, is this looking like troll hair to anybody else? Doesn't it look like troll hair? My goodness. Let's just put it on top of Tux's head. <laughs> oh my gosh, that just totally reminds me of troll hair from like the little troll dolls I had when I was a kid.